clearly uh, one of the influences in, in Gloria Serena's musical career was, was her mother, if she um, made sure that you did your practicing and so on. You're not uh, a, a, a disciplined person then, or you were not just naturally disciplined? This is something you had to learn? <laughs> I think everybody does, but I was full of energy, so it just simply got channeled. But, but your life is a very, it must be a very disciplined one. Now, that, now it's more and more so all the time. Yeah. You know, I don't waste minutes. <laughs> I used to waste whole days once upon a time. Yeah. Other, 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 have there been other influences on your musical life? Strong influences? Oh, uh, you mean people? Mm -hmm. Yes, Teachers. all the way through, yeah. Um, I think one of the earliest ones was um, um, a performer by the name of Solomon. When I was 10, I went to a re recital, <clears throat> and he played Beethoven. And I was just thunderstruck. You know, it was, was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And here he was, you know, quite a short man, totally bald. Nothing really impressive about him except the minute he, he started to play, and then it was just so powerful. That's what really got me going, actually. Mm -hmm. But playing piano must take incredible strength and stamina. I mean, I'm thinking of some of the long, big works that, that, that you do. You're a, a little tiny person. You're not very big. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not very tall. You can't weigh very much. And yet, you must be remarkably strong. Um, I have very solid fingers, very solid hands. Yeah. And that's where a lot of the power comes from. And probably, actually, my, you know, my body is sturdy. There's, it's not, I'm not slim, really. Gee, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a lot of strength, I think. And, uh, well, I've always been fairly physically active in sports of all kinds. Yeah, you don't so protect I think your hands, do no. you? No, no. You know, I mean, you're not like a Glenn Gould who runs around in, in heated gloves and, no. and won't shake hands with anyone. And you well, climb I always, mountains. <laughs> well, I was hands? bigger, you know, that, yeah, I know. But, uh, yes, because you need your bare skin on when you're rock climbing. You don't, can't wear gloves. You can't feel anything. You've got to know what you're holding. I mean, what if you grab something, it comes off? Yeah. <laughs> You've got to know what's... But what if you have an accident? Well, you could I have mean, one of those crossing the road, too. Yeah, I suppose you could. I suppose you could. I think you've just got to live. Yeah. And I think probably the fact that I, I really re re like climbing is that element of spiciness, let's call it that. That challenge? Yeah. I mean, you really climb. We're not talking just little wee hills out here, are we? Well, I've done every kind. Um, now, I I'm, I'm quite often will take the easiest route up to the top rather than the, the toughest. But I do like to rock climb. Mm. You've, you've been away traveling in Europe, mm -hmm. and uh, you managed to combine some, some work with, uh, with pleasure and, and some climbing. Were, were there some pretty yeah. exciting climbs over there? Well, we, the summer festival was a, in a place called L'Aquila. That's the eagle. Mm -hmm. So it was a little mountaintop village just outside of Rome. And, you know, the Apennines are in the background, and there's a big mountain there in the Gran Sasso, they're called. This was the Corno Grande, the biggest one that just stuck up. And I looked at, at that thing every day, and I thought, i got to get up. And you did? And Carl was with me. So one day we took off very early in the morning, and up we went. Carl, of course, is, uh, is Mr. Sarina. Yeah, my husband. The man who brought you to Calgary in, yeah. in the first place. Yeah. Is, is he very supportive? Has he always been supportive of your, uh, your career? Oh, yeah. Very um, intelligent about it, too. You know, he's when I'm likely to get totally emotionally off to one side, he can straighten me out again. Mm. And he's very enthusiastic at times when things don't go right. You know, sometimes you get a really, really rotten crit, or someone says, I don't like the way you do this, or, you know, and you think you've done something really good. So you have to stop and reassess and think, now, am I crazy, or are they? <laughs> do you get angry? In those situations. Sure, yeah. you you know, you must know. <laughs> if you or maybe you've only ever had good reviews. Oh no, oh no, <laughs> no, I've had the bad reviews. Yeah, well, don't you get mad? Sure, if I think they're unfair. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm. So he is um, um, a kind of a calming, leveling influence. Yes, but he doesn't get involved in the sense of he doesn't really want to help. In you know where I'm sort of working with concert series or when I started the Chinook piano competition. He said, you know, we'd get a, that would be the quickest way of getting a divorce if I were, got, if I got dragged into that too, so. 
So he stays, he stays on out the side. of it. Yeah. yeah. And he's probably right. But you, you share a lot, don't you? You, you share the climbing and the, yeah. the hiking and oh, the yes. art scene. Oh, and, and I like all cooking. his friends. Yeah, yeah, he's a teacher. And uh, I find school teachers marvelous people. They're all, they don't seem to be jealous or envious. And, you know, they're really very lively, yeah. intelligent bunch, for the most part. And I really enjoy them. A, 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 a terrible tragedy occurred in, in your life a few years ago, and I don't know if, if, you, if you even care to talk about it, Gloria, but uh, your only son, 17-year-old child, was killed in a, a climbing accident. This is a, a very experienced boy. He had climbed with you and your husband. How did the two of you, what, what kind of resources did you find to get through that? Or is it something you ever get through? You know, I still can't talk about it. I think, you know, it's just something that, well, life deals things and uh, you have to handle them the best you can. I worked with the trio at that time and I did all the concerts that toured the States with the trio and they helped me through tremendously because they were there. Did it help having that, that kind of involvement in your music? Could you? Yeah, yeah, it did. Kind of almost escape. Through, yeah. the, through the music? No, you don't escape, but your mind is forced to concentrate on other things until time finally. Well, you can see I'm yes. still not if, if totally. If it ever does. If it yeah. ever does. Yeah. You, you can just keep setting new, new challenges for yourself, it seems to me. Um, you're very successful as a soloist, very successful as a teacher, and then you decided to form this, uh, this one third ninth to which you have, uh, yeah. have just referred. How long did, it, did the trio go? About 10 years? Yeah. yeah. And did it just sort of run its course? Well, we did, we played all the, the, the literature for you know, piano trios and really enjoyed and traveled a lot of places. And then we sort of grew, I needed, to, I got into to chamber music because my, you know, Jeremy was growing up and mm -hmm. it was easier. That was one of the reasons. And also I felt that pianists need other musicians because they're the only ones that are on their own and you've got to know how to fit and play with other people it's part of the whole maturing process mm -hmm. but then i did it and it was time to go back to solo and it did wonders for my playing i know that it did oh yeah what did it do um i learned what you have to do to play a violin the kind of sounds the way you phrase how to get a beautifully smooth phrase um, or with a cello, the kind of things that are necessary, how to blend a piano sound into those sounds without, you know, overpowering them. I learned all sorts of new techniques in music, new ideas from listening to other people mm -hmm. approach it with different instruments, and I could apply those to the piano so that it just opened up a new world of sound, really. You, you've said that um, some countries are more oriented toward music in their educational systems than, than others. Where does Canada fit in? Do we regard uh, musical education as a, a bit of a frill? It, it's a total frill. It's not even in the sense. Um, you see, music, to, to teach children how to play, they have to have, for the most part, individual instruction. You can't do that in the schools. You've got to teach as a class. So the only way you can do that is to to have bands and choirs, which are wonderful, but it's still a frill. And you look at your <coughs> adult population here, they go to, what do they go to? What fills up first with well, the Calgary Philharmonic, but the pops. And that's, that's just the frothy stuff on the top. That's got nothing to do with um, really solid Beethoven, Brahms, and all that sort of thing. So, you know, I think that it's not there yet. Even in this country, it's coming. And, you know, the, it's changing all the time. But I think it's people are born, in, you know, from the time they're born in Germany, for instance, singing and knowing everything that Beethoven ever wrote Italy. or Brahms. Italy, yes, yeah, yeah. singing. Mm. You go to an opera in a tiny little town, you sit outside, and the whole audience sings from beginning to end. They know every recitative, they know all the arias. So it's how do you incredible. do that? How do you even start that, that sort of um, attitude toward music in, in youngsters without teaching each individual child? I think 
that um, parents are totally aware of this now and they're really, really trying to get their kids individual instruction. When you see the classes, the enrollment classes, even in Mount Royal College, you, can, you realize that uh, parents want this for their kids. So I think that's the only way you can do it and that's what they do in Europe. Mm. They all study one instrument or another. Who do you teach in Calgary? I mean, are you very selective about uh, who you work with? Or? Well, we have a marvelous program in, um, it's called the Academy Program in the college, and I've got from six years of age to about 16 or even older. Um, and they're really talented kids. Um, there was an endowment fund, quite a generous one, put aside for that very purpose. And the, so those um, children can get instruction in private piano lessons and in theory and in master classes of all kinds. We bring in all kinds of international celebrities for that. I want to talk about your, your work as an impresario because that's, that's sort of another phase that, uh, that you're into. But we'll take a, a quick commercial break and return with Gloria right after this.